The Ultimate Iron Man, the hardest and most restricted game mode in old school RuneScape. No banking or trading other players. And after claiming the world record for fastest maxscape on a main account, I decided to step it up and speedrun max total on an Ultimate Iron Man. Just me and my inventory in a race against the clock. And the goal? 99 in all skills before the timer hits 2000 hours. This is the Ultimate Iron Man Maxcape speedrun any percent. Hee yo, welcome back to the Ultimate Iron Man speedrun. Last week's episode was centered around obtaining the last pieces of the Slayer gear. We got a Dragon Defender, trained combat, got 58 Slayer and obtained the Black Mask. And now it's time to put this mask to some good use. I'm still point boosting with Priya and doing my 10th task at Konar because I need a lot of Slayer points to unlock a bunch of things like Superiors, Slayer Helm, the extra Wyvern block, Broad Arrows and some extensions. E finally some spiders. I was hoping to get this task soon. You know for the Karamia Medium Diary you need to get 100% Taibo 1 Eye Favor and normally most people kill jungle spiders for this. So I thought, why not do that while on a Slayer task to get some zero time XP? So once you have repaired the fans and claimed some trading sticks, you can earn favor killing the spiders. That's the task done, only got up to 19% favor, so probably we'll need 2 or 3 more tasks to complete the 100%. It is time for my 60th task at Konar. Ooh, black dragons in the evil chicken lair, yeah that's probably not happening. I could get revenge for the dragon that killed me, but yeah, I don't think I'm like strong enough to kill those dragons reliably. So I'm gonna skip it. Oh, Konar, yeah, that's really surprising. 37 bronze dragons, that's another skip. Um, what? Hyra dragons this time? Another skip? Ah! <laughs> Alright, man. I just lost more points than I gained from this boosting task. This is insane, Konar. Please... Oh, good to the commercial breaks. I, I can't take this anymore. This video is sponsored by Manscaped. Summer is around the corner, so Manscaped is making sure you are scaped up and looking fresh for this summer. You can get 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using the code HEYBOXJUNGE. The best way to prepare for this summer is to use the Ultimate Grooming Bundle, the Performance Package 4.0. Inside you will find a lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It also has a LED spotlight for when you need a more precise shave. And now that you have the perfect haircut, use Manscaped's liquid formulations to keep the freshness even at the hottest summer barbecues. Most importantly, use the crop preserver ball deodorant to stay cool in the heat. Another essential tool from Manscaped for the summer months are the Shears 2.0. With its compact design, you can take this anywhere to make sure your feet are looking fresh as well. Get ready for summer by shopping Manscaped and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code HEYBOXJUNGE at manscaped.com. That is 20% off plus free shipping with the code HEYBOXJUNGE at manscaped.com. Thank you Manscaped for sponsoring. Okay, before you all start commenting, I now know that there is a baby black dragon in the evil chicken lair, so that whole disaster could have been prevented. But still, how was I supposed to know that, man? stupid dragons. I kind of trolled by blocking all the super common tasks from Konar because now I think bronze dragons are pretty much the most common one which is not great. But on the bright side look at my inventory at all the juicy prayer XP from the ensold heads and I was supposed to use all the heads on task that is why I got 72 magic beforehand since you need 72 for the higher tier of the ensold heads but it turns out my dragon battle axe lowers my magic level, so I can't cast that spell on task. So after the task, we go to the dark altar to collect some prayer XP. And that's the last one, just shy of 51 prayer, and back to Spria we go. In the meantime, I've also been farming the seeds that I get from Slayer, but I'm running kind of low on ultra compost, so it's time to do something about that. And the way I'm going to do that is by getting the lumberjack outfit. After you complete a temple track, you get a reward token, which you can trade in for watermelon seeds. So while getting the lumberjack outfit, I also got 110 watermelon seeds. Mined a couple hundred volcanic ash with some 1.5 take action. 
And I also got some pure essence from the reward token from Temple Tracking, so I could do the Slug Manus quest. And once again, I used Guardians of the Rift for this instead of having to go through the Abyss. And of course, this quest unlocks the Proselyte Armor, which is the best in slot prayer bonus for me. So goodbye, Rune Plate Legs. And now it's time to farm some Ultra Compost with the recently acquired new materials and edit a video. A little while later, and although watermelon seeds have been farmed, just shy of 300 Ultra Compost, and I planted the last ones here for the Mauritania Diary while doing the Great Brain Robbery. And man, this quest also kind of sucked on Ultimate Iron Man. The part where you have to make 10 wooden cats and also have the materials for building the box and on top of my items that are already in my inventory, like the looting bag and seed box and such. It was quite a hassle to get this done. But that is the quest done and 5k Herblor XP. Also the watermelons didn't die, so the diary step is completed. And this is probably the last time I've ever visited this island or this account because I'm not gonna do the Mauritania Elite Diary. So yeah, the herb patch is not gonna be used. During this quest I had to bag some items to make space and I need to make some more potions to continue a slayer because I pretty much ran out. So you know what time it is, it is dead pile time. First making all the super attacks from the irids and then all the prayer potions from the runner weeds. And we have a decent amount of uh, potions, we should definitely be able to get 69 slayer with this. Still had one round of ultra compost left that I had to make. And that puts us well over 300 Ultra Compost, so that should keep me going for a while, I hope. I also left my Black Knives from the Defender Grind out of the bag, since I need to train my ranged as well. I need level 62 in the short term for Spulker. So I bought some Green Dehyde and also a Bone Crossbow. And I want to do Spria tasks with range, and that definitely adds up over time since you get like 1 or 2k per task in range XP, so yeah, but before that we need to get an imbue for our black mask, otherwise the ranged accuracy and damage bonus isn't applied. And for that we go to the PvP arena, because that is definitely very alive content and definitely not abusable with an alt. And I kept matching up with this Drift Deeper guy, but I don't know what he was doing, but for sure he wasn't trying. I got enough for two imbue scrolls actually, so I'm gonna only pick one now, since I don't have a berserker in yet. So yeah, that is a Black Mask imbued in 20 minutes, which is actually 0 minutes since it's a different counter as well. And I finally got my first Bloodfell task as well from Konar, and it was in the Catacombs, so that is extra juice. And they also have low defense, so this is perfect for my Black Knives. And currently getting 33k range XP per hour and almost 9k Slayer, which is around, with current EHP rates, 2.5 EHP if not more. Since for range it is 20k XP per hour until level 60. And for Slayer it is 7.1k considering all the questing and point boosting you have to do it at first. So yeah, getting decent EHP per hour now. And I finished all the black knives on this task and got me up to 50 range, which is actually perfect since I need level 50 to be able to use the lamp from a knight at the theater on it. So yeah, that is just very nice and now i'm gonna switch back to melee and this is where the real slayer xp comes in almost 20k an hour and getting like 80k combat xp per hour so that is like really good and i just got 75 strength so training attack now to get to level 85 combat as soon as possible so i can start using me for like more blood felts and that i can actually do them in the catacombs all the time because these guys shit out blood runes, alcohols, and ensold heads, so definitely want to do as much Slayer XP as I can here. And that is my 100th task completed, for a total of 450 points. I got more blood welts, but unfortunately they were in the Godwars dungeon, so that is definitely a skip. Ooh, jellies in the catacombs. This is normally a pretty good barrage task, but I need melee XP as uh, much as possible. So I'll we'll just use my Dragon Sim for these. And unlocking bigger and better because they have a chance to spawn a superior. So hopefully we do get one. Of course, we forgot to record the superior, but we did get one. You can see it in the chat box and we got some mithril boots from it. But with this 69 attack, we achieve 85 combat and are now able to get a Slayer task from Neve. So I'm probably just gonna move to Neve after this one, since I, my points are looking decent. 
And Neve assigned me some cave horrors, so that is another superior chance. And decent herb seeds, so yeah, pretty good. <laughs> okay, that's my second black mask in like 250 kills. Ooh, superior. That guy looks kind of cool. This is definitely the first time I've ever, like, killed this cave horror superior, because I never do cave horror tasks. He has kind of low HP, so the XP drop isn't going to be that great. And the loot also is not great. <laughs> Another one? Um... Sure. And another big one. This is quite a task. I like it. And no good loot. And I sold the black mask to the general store and bought them on my alt. So yeah, made some GP on this account as well, like 2k. But I made 2 mil on the alt. We have hit a roadblock, ladies and gentlemen. I finally got black demons, but... My block list is full, and I need 14 more quest points for the 250 block slots. So yeah, it is time for some questing. And we are starting off with a banger, Rag and Bowman 1, which is very fun on Ultimate Iron Man, especially when you have like half your Slayer set up in your inventory. So when I had to like put the bones into the pots, I just did it in two trips, because yeah, just not enough space. But that is Rag and Bowman out of the way. I also did Fairy Tale Part 2, and I had a pretty big brain strat, in my opinion, for not having to wait on the flower to spawn in the Cosmic Realm. If you go there first on an alt, the flowers have already spawned, and you can just pick them up right away and leave. And that is 3.5k Herblore from the quest, and 2.5k from the lamp. 11 quest points to go. Uh, next is Swan Song, and I already did prep the combination runes in MTA, like a in episode 2, I think. So I just went there and grabbed the runes. The boss fight wasn't even close. And that is another 2 quest points on the board. And 50k fishing XP. And that got me up to 78 fishing. And Akra's Lament for a lot of 7k XP in different skills. And 2 quest points. And a diary step as well. Eagle Speaking Tom. And Land of the Goblins. Doing Rag and Bowman too now. But why was this quest added to the game? The first one already fucking sucked. And then there was someone like, oh wow, this is great. Let's add part two with four times as many obscure monsters to kill. And you know what will make it even better? Make the bones a one in four chance instead of a guaranteed drop. I'm sure people will enjoy killing 11 ice giants for a bone while being ragged by fucking ice war. And that is Rag and Bowman 2 finally completed. And then I did Scorpion Catcher to get me to 249 quest points, so just one more. And for that final one, I went and remade the Ivandes Flail for the Taste of Hope quest. And I killed Renes Drakan quite easily. And that is the Taste of Hope completed for the final quest point. And of course the XP goes on Herblore. Alright, so blocking Black Demons now that we have our 5th block. And Skeboras, man, I'm already down bad for points, Neve. Don't do me like this. Okay, blue dragons, that's better. And did you guys know that you can buy a Dusty Key in the Legends Guild? Because I didn't, and I definitely went more than once back to the jail all the way in the end of the Terrible Dungeon to get the key back. But from now on, I will just simply buy the key, or when I have 70 agility, I can just use the shortcut. But I don't have that right now. A little fast forward, I got 65 defense during Slayer training, so that means I could do King's Ransom. And of course, after King's Ransom, it is time to do the Night Waves. And I just cowered in a corner and flinched all the bosses, because yeah, I don't really have that much space for food. But I'm not yet 60 prayer, so this was actually kind of useless outside of the combat XP. Yeah, I got um, 70 attack from this. Some more Konar for my 150th task. Also going to open the 7 keys that have been sitting in my inventory for far too long. But first we have to skip some dragons because Konar... Ah, this time I will do these. I've learned from my mistakes. And for the keys... 
Oh, some rubies. That's actually really good. Uh, iron ore. Not so great. Coal also useless. Conor, get out of my way. More rubies. Let's fucking go, man. More coal. Coins. That is also very nice. And more coal. Sure. Three times coal. Why not? But two times rubies is actually insane. That's really good. I only think I need like 60 more or something for the pendant. This is still just like so weird for me. That there is a singular baby black dragon down here. But at least I can finally do this task now. Another task that I'm going to be doing a lot is Aberrant Spectres. As they have a lot of good seed and herb drops. The Slayer XP is kinda low, but occasionally a superior spawn boosts it a little bit. And for the drops of the superiors, the only thing that is like actually useful for my speedrun is the internal gem, because that saves me a little bit of time when I have to go to the Slayer Tower. But other than that, the staves aren't that useful, and the imbued heart is also like, I don't know, it just takes up an inventory space and isn't that good. A herb sack would be really nice for this task, and I do plan on getting it later, but right now, just for like these couple Slayer levels, it isn't really worth it to get the herb sack and have it like stuck in my inventory. So yeah. I'll just leave the herbs on the ground for now. Oh yes, finally some more velts. I did buy the extension, so we are getting 200 plus every time. But this is just by far the best task for me. Like they have super low defense, so the rates are really good. And they just shit out blood runes and assault heads. It, I like it so much. And don't even get me started on the superiors. That's just the best feeling ever when one of those thick boys spawns up. 4.1k Slayer XP from just one kill. And they drop a guaranteed and sold head, which is like 1k prayer XP as well. And that's another 4.1k Slayer XP. I did run out of super attacks, but I also kind of need to leave because my inventory is just full of and sold heads. And I still have 87 left on task. I'm gonna restore my stats real quick at TOB because I need to have 72 magic in order to cast a spell. So I'm gonna use those quickly at the Dark Altar. And the third superior of the task. I'm getting super lucky with superiors on this one. Which is really good because the superior gives 4.1k XP. I'm gonna say it again. And after going back and forth between Aberrant Spectres and Bloodfeld some more. I hit 80 strength and 90 combat. So I'm gonna switch over to defense and attack a little bit now. Because 80 strength is like a nice milestone to stop at. And we are pretty close to 69 Slayer as well. And I also got a full crystal key finally for the first time during a single task from the Bloodfelds. So I'm going to open the chest in Teverly for the diary step. About to finally hit 69 Slayer. There it is. And that is the Slayer grind for now over since this is the requirement for Monkey Madness 2. And I'm going to come back to Slayer like much later into the account when I do 69 to 99. But I'm going to finish this task first though. And hopefully get a Dagonaut task so I can get my Berserker Ring later on on Slayer tasks. So that is a little bit more efficient. But yeah, I'm not going to skip like a good task for it. I got Fossil Island Wyverns after finishing at Anku task. So I'm going to skip those. Oh my dude, I actually got Dagonauts. Oh, thank you so much, Neve. I'll take all the mean words I said earlier about you back. <laughs> Man, that's so good. While getting 69 Slayer, I also got 71 attack, 80 strength and 69 defense. So hopefully that should be enough to defeat the Sins of the Father boss fight. And currently doing a Knight at the Theater. And after this Aspori, I just need to get the entry mode TUB KC. And for that, I just did a logout strat on the Ultimate Iron Man and went with two friends and my alt into the entry mode and just... Uh, cleared it that way and we also got the master speed time with only three people in a four-man skill so yeah not that i have any use for the points anymore but that is the quest done and the reason i did this quest now is for the xp lamps because you get four times 20k xp in a combat skill and that is perfect for my range level since i still need 62 so i'm gonna use all four of them on ranged and that gets me to level 57 so I need 5 more, and I have the perfect place to get those last range levels. And that is good old pest control. I don't want to take the risk of thinking that my combat stats are just fine for the Sinsers of Father boss fight, since my gear is going to be really bad otherwise, so I'm going to get full void actually. 
And Void is also very helpful for range later on. But the top and the bottom have really good magic defense. So that is going to be very useful for the Sins of the Father boss. And meanwhile, I can just train up my ranged. And because of the medium combat achievements, I'm getting two bonus best points per game. So getting six in total for a game on the intermediate boat, since I'm still under 100 combat. And it's only one point difference anyway, so it doesn't really matter to do it now. I did bring in my alt to have a little bit more control over the game since some people really do be sitting on their hands while doing this. So I probably failed, I don't know, a handful of games, but it only took me like 6 hours to get my range level and to finish the points for full void. And now it's time to do Sins of the Father again. I've done this quest like 7 times in total across all my alts, but every time I still get nervous for the boss fight at the end. Especially on this account, since dying means losing a lot of time. Luckily, all of the quests before the final fight is actually really easy, so we're kind of flying through it. And even doing some Tikmadip on the Blisterwood tree by eating Karambans and chopping with my Dragon Axe. Buying the Void top and bottoms for the final fight. And getting the supplies is a little bit tricky on an Ultimate Iron Man, since I have Bruise in my looting bag, so I will need to deadpile for this to get them out. And I don't really have any super restores, so I did plant a Snapdragon seed, so I'm just gonna make super restores on the go. As well as some super strengths. And unnote the super attacks that I have in my inventory. And now the first death pile to get the bruise out of my looting bag. And then another one to get rid of the noted bruise. And then while I was picking up my gear to finally go to the boss fight, I picked up my Draymond stuff, which I wasn't supposed to do, so I had to dead pile for a third time. But now it's finally time to do my first attempt. Supplies are still looking okay-ish at the start of P2. I just need some decent RNG and I should have it in the bag. I did not have it in the bag. God damn it, man. Now I have to prep again for like 10 minutes. My hits were just so, so bad on the final phase. Man. After spending like 10 minutes to prep again, it is now time to go again. And I did bring out an extra brew. So hopefully this is the one. And the supplies are looking much, much, much better when going into P2. This definitely should be it. And I also took off my Void Bottoms, because magic defense doesn't matter anymore since his hits are 100% accuracy. But I couldn't really see the Lightning as well on the last one, since my Void Bottoms were exactly the size of the Lightning. Hey, that is the boss defeated. It was actually somewhat easy this time. I think I just had like very shit RNG on the first one because this time I had a lot of food left over. But yeah, that feels really good to have this one out of the way. And now I can in 90k herb lore XP. 6 times 15k. Oh baby. That looks good. And that marks the end of this episode. The Hallowed Sepulcher has been unlocked, and we will be venturing down there in the next one. So now it's time for the stats update. On the left the stats from last video, 
in the middle the current stats and the difference between them. Broke into the 1500 total level, got 69 Slayer for Monkey Madness 2, 62 ranged for Looting Sepulchre and we actually gained 9 hours back on the playtime in this one, due to Slayer. Only 20 hours difference now. But yeah, that was it for today. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe and take care everybody.